ITV's current logo was introduced in 2013, with a set of idents very much in the standard slice-of-life quasi-formalist mould that they'd been using beforehand. Indeed, the sort of thing that more or less everyone was doing some variation on by then, and had been since the turn of the century. Unremarkable stuff happening, plus a logo. The usual thing, really. Nothing innovative, and very little memorable. They lasted six years, during which time the BBC One doubled down on the concept to the point where it lost both form and meaning. BBC Two lost its grip on its sense of self completely and had to start again from scratch. And Channel Four simply lost its mind. As for Channel Five, they carried on flailing about as usual. With oneness representing an unavoidable nadir in the fashion of Verite slice of life idents and the other two main channels retreating into abstraction, ITV apparently decided, you know what, we've got this logo, we paid Fiona Skinner an awful lot of money for it, and she created the logo for the the, so she's got pedigree. Why don't we do something with it? Make a campaign of it, so people actually notice. Why don't we have a different ident every week for a year? all created by some of the hottest British artists. If nothing else, it'll make oneness look even worse than it is. They first turned to Ravi Deeker, a video artist better known for collaborations with the likes of the Wayne Gregor Random Dance Company and especially industrial drone merchants Zoviet France. If that led you to expect some stone-faced crypto-communist noise-making, you'd be disappointed. Because instead, Deeper produced a lovely piece of back projection, in which a big white model of the logo became multiple windows on multiple worlds. It would have made for a great permanent ident for ITV all the way back in 2013. In centering the logo while simultaneously manipulating it, it uses the same basic principle as Lambie Nen, the Bladed 2 in 1991, but with an entirely original method, specifically using the logo as a literal canvas. The music's not by Soviet France, incidentally, it's in-house and used pretty much solidly for the rest of the next three years, with adaptations. Despite being a more or less perfect ident notion, it was destined to only last a week, as the project kept a rolling on. Second to bat was Sutapa Biswas, who works in photography, film and installation, usually on the theme of cultural and ethnic identity. And her work for ITV was no different, as she arranged dozens of donated saris into both the logo and the pedestal it sits upon. Week 3 was given to James Brunt of Sheffield, who specialises in hypnotic outdoor op art made with stones, leaves, twigs, and whatever else he finds on the ground nearby. ITV brought him into the studio, so the materials had to be imported, but the style remained very much intact. Week 4's ident turned out to be one of the more popular. It was made by Patricia Vaughn, who makes cute abstract sculptures finished in bright vivid acrylics like Barbara Hepworth on the Sugar Rush, and that's what she did for ITV. Usually she makes her clay shapes at random and fits them together in whatever way happens to be pleasing, so this was a rare excursion for her into deliberate shaping. Week 5, the last week of January, was given to Superhands lookalike Mark Titchener, a Turner-nominated artist whose work tends to incorporate slogans and bold graphic design. Perfect for an ident then. Instead of anything bold and pop art like, however, he went with this more conceptual approach with coloured granules, inspired by the television picture being made of pixels. Moving into February, week six belonged to Katrina Russell Adams. Her work has similarities with that of Patricia Vol, being based around bright colours and pieces of shapes, but where Volk's work is softer and more curved, Adams, while equally abstract, are more angular and geometric and influenced by modernism and constructivism. For ITV, she actively deconstructed the logo into a mobile, 
leaving the camera to try and find the angle where it could be recognised as anything. The same principle as the Channel 4 edits from 2005 to 2015, but arguably even harder to find. Christina Vizi is a visual artist and former Paralympic wheelchair basketballer. She was with Team GB at Sydney and Athens. Her work usually involves highly brash colours, and her ident for Week 7 was themed around the cosy domesticity exemplified by shows like Coronation Street, and adapted the logo into some truly eye-searing wallpaper and furniture. Week 8 was given to James Alec Hardy, a video artist in the literal sense. His favourite trick is to make totems out of old, obsolete analogue video equipment, playing arrangements of patterns on the screens. And that's what he did for ITV. For week 9, Alex Stevens, not the American illustrator but a mighty bearded Bristolian sculptor, produced a corrugated wooden model of the logo, which was then shot with lights moving this way and that. The inspiration, it turns out, was the little flickering box in the corner that signalled a commercial break was on the way. You know what I mean. It's actually called a Q-Mark, and you still see them on live events. Onward to March, and Charlie Peters, who's a lady, produced a massive three-dimensional walk-in painting in bright colours and abstract patterning, the scale of which was sadly rather lost in the filming. Week 11 was given over to Isabel plus Helen, Gibson and Chesna respectively, visual design artists who, in their own words, tell stories through innovative use of materials and animated sculpture, like this face, for example. For ITV, they use what looks like dozens of ping-pong balls and a wind machine. For week 12, ITV turned to Barty Palmer, who specialises in geometrical patterns on services, printmaking and marketry. That's the art of patterning on wood with layers of veneer, and that's what we have here, albeit with vinyl instead. The overall impression is of parquet floors and wallpapers, emphasising ITV's place at the heart of domestic Britain. Week 13, the last of March, saw more deconstruction, courtesy of the flamboyant postmodernist Adam Nathaniel Furman, an unsurprisingly North London-based designer with a degree in architecture. Furman stands at the head of a movement of bright kaleidoscopic maximalism, which they call the New London Fabulous exemplified by their proud little pyramid at King's Cross. Here, yeah, they've essentially created a candy-coloured totem out of the ITV logo, with the different colours representing different aspects of broadcasting, factual entertainment and drama, according to Furman, all meeting in the middle. Moving into April, week 14 saw Ollie Fathers decorating a massive model of the logo with a grid of paint drips, like an orderly Jackson Pollock. The overall effect is a network like the underground railway in Tron World, or the synapses in the brain. For week 15, CJ Mahoney, not the Microsoft lawyer, another lady, created a massive wooden passageway in the shape of the logo, big enough to walk through. Although once again that doesn't quite come across in the film. Week 16 of 2019 was Easter week, although whether they knew that or had it in mind when they commissioned the ident is unknown. They might have done. Fiona Grady is known for her colourful geometric installations on walls and windows, and whether by accident or design, she provided a highly appropriate stained glass motif for Christ's Passion, the logo almost appearing as an optical illusion. Week 17 was Lori Nushka, who uses her art as an adjunct to yoga and meditation. Her theme is urban architecture, which she translates onto fabric and makes clothes from and in this case, wraps the ITV logo in, so that it's literally wrapped in London. Caroline Wright's contribution for Week 18 was all about chemistry, with glass tubes in the shape of the logo filled with primary coloured liquid. Channel 4 did something like this once. Then again, Channel 4 did everything. Into May, and Week 19's ident technically didn't use the logo at all. That's because the artist, Rubina Aurangzeb Tariq, is deaf. So she sculpted the letters I, T and V in British Sign Language and placed them on individual pedestals. Glasgow-based artist Liz West enjoys optical illusions and immersive installations that play with light and colour to mess up your perception. And that's what ITV got for week 20. She produced a deceptively simple pile of translucent coloured plastic discs with the logo model suspended upside down over it. 
The camera then roamed around the discs in such a way that it appeared reflected the right way up in various configurations. MiG-21 belonged to Gail Chong Kwan, known for making large-scale immersive installations. She often uses waste and found products like the Revenge of Bitzer, and that's what she did for ITV, constructing the logo out of dozens of old milk bottles and the like. May ended on week 22 with Florence Mitem producing a sculpture of the logo covered with a sort of alien vegetation by way of exploring textures. Moving on to June, and week 23 was given to Greta Davies, who produced a brightly coloured op art piece, with the logo in negative space and heading for the vanishing point. For week 24, Rabia Chowdhury, who usually makes unsettling expressionistic paintings, raised a flag. Two flags, actually. A blue one with what she called an alien eyeball motif, and a red one decorated with love hearts, as a direct reference to how much fun ITV could be. The wind machine could probably have stood to be darned down a bit, though. Week 25 included my birthday, so it better way have been good. It was given over to street artist Carly de Souza. Rather than just spraying the logo on a wall, she created a wrapped cityscape in deliberately retro black and purple grids, invoking the concept of city to a child in the 80s, with the logo hovering over it like the moon. Keith Sargent and Lindsay Sears are the only two artists on the Isle of Sheppey, probably. And for week 26, the dead centre of the year, they created a brightly coloured Zoe trope with the ITV logo flicking on and off an old-fashioned TV screen, invoking the long history of the network. Into July was week 27. Yvette Hawkins is a half-English, half-Korean artist whose work takes inspiration from both the cultures she was born into. She's particularly skilled at origami, and that's what she used for her ident, specifically modular origami, in which the paper is folded into several tiny pieces which are then used as the tiles for larger scale mosaics. Like this. The modules are made from Ordnance Survey maps to symbolise ITV's national reach. Julia Vogel is another artist who likes working in bright colours and geometrical shapes, and for week 28, she decorated the interior of a large black box in vivid patterns and cut a logo-shaped hole in the front. This was apparently inspired by the old children's game of finding discarded cardboard boxes and making them into bespoke TV sets. Week 29 was given to the 1 to 1 Collective, a highly conscious grouping of young people, all of whom are cooler than you will ever be. They went down the Bitsa route again by making a junk sculpture out of this and that, which also doubles as a bug hotel, where insects and other wildlife can come and hang out, including insectivores like hedgehogs. I don't think you're supposed to think too hard about that part. For week 30, we were introduced to M and Liv, that's Emily Browning and Olivia Weston, a design team then on an apprenticeship with Sarchi and Sarchi, and that tracks with the advertising influence style of their idea, which is not entirely unlike something from United Colours of Benetton. To round off July, ITV went to Newcastle University and grabbed 18-year-old student Brandon Saunders to make Week 31's item. His other field of expertise is circuitry, as you can see from his copper plating and crocodile clip sculpture of the logo. ITV stayed with the university motif going into August, with Week 32's item centering around an abstract and charcoals with projection created collectively by the B.A. Ons Fine Arts Students of Arts University Bournemouth under Richard Waring. Bristol provided Week 33's artist, specifically the University of West of England, with an M.A. student named Ash Kaiser. He arranged a pile of multicoloured cubes into a more involved sculpture than you might immediately realise, in which each block apparently represents a memory of his ITV childhood. This brief run of student projects ended with Erin Taylor on week 34. Her bio was the shortest in the whole project. She was at Manchester Metropolitan University reading fine art, and this was her first ever commissioned work. She filled a logo-shaped hole with iron filings and then manipulated them from below with a magnet. Apparently she wanted a rough texture, hence the iron, but for me, the motion accidentally transformed it into fur or feathers. Definitely a promising student. 
Week 35 saw August out with Emily Forgot. Yes, that is a super. She's another contemporary artist influenced by modernism and the Bauhaus as well as architecture, all of which is visible in her item, which transforms the ITV logo into an impractical but aesthetically pleasing interior space, complete with doors, stairs and even a swing. This suggests either a birdcage or certain other possibilities I won't go into. Moving into September, as the nights start drawing in and the colours start to fade. Not that anyone told Florence Blanchard. Starting out painting egg-headed caricatures on French walls, she's another abstract artist who favours bright colours and geometrical shapes, which she brought to the ITV IDEM for week 36 as part of a 3D landscape in the old Channel 4 mold. In week 37, Hackney-based sculptor Russell Bamber created a raised vertical sculpture of the logo, slightly discombobulated, it could only be recognised from above, explicitly just to confuse you. Week 38 was given over to Louise Bristow, a Brighton-based model maker whose interest is in urban landscapes and cultural variations thereupon. Her idea drew upon this interest, with the logo as a sort of giant mall in the middle of a town, or even a town centre itself, with bus station, apartment buildings and a water tower acting as the dot in the eye. Yinka Ilori took on week 39. His style tends to involve bright colours and patterns based on the Nigerian fables and fabrics he grew up around. All of that can be seen in his ITV ident, which is bright, vibrant and even visceral, while abstract enough that no two viewers would have the same impression of it. September ended rather dramatically with Mexican artist Fernando Le Pos. He likes to make pieces entirely from a single ingredient. For week 40, he chose sugar. He boiled it into a resin and then dyed and poured it into a mould of the logo to create a sort of giant ITV branded spangle. At least that was the idea. The liquid in MV ran straight out again almost immediately, but that was fine. Keep shooting and run it in reverse. Moving into October, week 41 was handled by Stuart Robinson an artist based in Penry in Cornwall. Not actually Cornish though. Still he did a good job with his blinking light sculpture, which inadvertently had some small echoes of the 1989 ITV logo, which is still the best the channel ever had, don't at me. Week 42's artist, Noemi Lackmeyer, is actually usually a performance artist, more likely to do things like lie in the middle of a room for two days tied to several thousand helium balloons, waiting to see if she'll float. She did. Her ITV ident was more straightforward, themed around ITV providing a twist on the everyday by having the logo suddenly assert itself in the middle of some road markings. Mark Nixon and Belina Coivisto are neon, and they were inspired by hair standing on end to create their ident for week 43. This is made with several hundred individual pieces, all counterweighted so as to sway in the wind machine. It's alien and unsettling and perfect for October. For week 44, ITV turned to Marie Jones, otherwise known as Kochi Kochi, a Japanese way of saying look over here. She was inspired by the transition between daytime and primetime television, and we created this clouded version of the logo with a knitting machine and had it lit several ways to demonstrate that transition. Into November, starting in week 45 with Joe Taylor, ceramicist. She created a sort of quasi-abstract floral centrepiece out of porcelain, with a cup of tea and the dot of the eye to represent the most popular activity during commercial breaks. Week 46 was given to Anna Berry, best known for large-scale immersive pieces like a massive walk-through tunnel made of as many paper cones as she could bring herself to make before becoming sick of them. Cones also provided the substance of her ITV ident, which resembles a sort of floral reef made of alien vegetation. Strangely recurring theme. For week 47, artist Sam Curtis collaborated with professional scaffolder Dave Bennett in an unusual way. Curtis essentially subcontracted Bennett to take the skills and understanding he uses every day for practical purposes and use them to make something non-functional and purely aesthetic instead. Apart from that basic premise, and the need to incorporate the ITV logo, 
Bennett apparently had carved the lunch, and he decided to make a logo with a shooting star motif. November ended with Dan Rawlings, whose work is mostly in metal sculpture and is informed by a love of discarded ephemera, old road signs and the like, and visions of nature reclaiming the earth from mankind. He also likes to play with shadows, and all of this went into his eye for week 48, cut out of a flight case. December means Christmas, which means an extra motif for the artists hired for the last few weeks, starting with Faith Bebbington, a figure sculptor, who created a carefully detailed rendering of a jubilant reindeer lit from within and with fur made from bits of milk bottle, so it glowed properly, for week 49. For week 50, ITV turned to Hattie Newman, who literally wrote the book on paper craft. She created ITV Town, an insanely minutely detailed model townscape in the shape of the logo, which must have taken absolutely ages to make. Week 51 fell to Melanie Tomlinson, who turned the logo into three intricately detailed gift boxes for the highly symbolic plant-based gifts. Holly, Ivy and Oranges, filmed in various states of undress and surrounded by bits of holly and pine gum. It's quite reminiscent of those avant-garde Christmases we used to get from BBC Two in the Alan Yentob era. For the final week of the year, incorporating Christmas at one end and New Year on the other, Anna Lomax, a set designer and art director, created a deceptively serene pure white sculpture the ITV logo that erupted in sequins to celebrate the season and the end of the project. So that went well. Certainly ITV thought so because they decided in 2020 they'd do it all again, albeit this time on a monthly basis. Unfortunately, around the same time they decided this, someone in China ate a bat. And shortly afterwards, the best laid plans the world over fell apart. They also decided that in 2020 they'd focus on good causes as well as artists. For example, January 2020's ident was made by textile-based slow artist Saj Farid and the women of the Asian Women Resource Centre in Brent. Together they made this lovely embroidered mosaic. February was where things started looking dicey, but I didn't stop Hermione Allsop and the Hastings Furniture Service, mainly because they'd been recorded months earlier. Their ident there was another that essentially went down the Bitsa route, being made of bits of old chairs, beds, end tables, and even lamps. In a coincidence so eerily appropriate as to be downright disturbing, March, the month of the plague, finally reached Britain and the country ground to a halt for the first time, was given to health-themed creative team on the Mend, working with some NHS staff to make another found object sculpture that initially came in pieces and was mended by the NHS bots in ways related to their jobs. And weren't we grateful to those people at that point because we spent April and May in quarantine watching ITV's Kids Create items. Basically a bunch of school kids around the nation got to paint the logo however they liked and the best we used over April. Cute, and fortunately for ITV pretty numerous as well because they extended it to the first couple of weeks of May as well. By now, appointments were being cancelled and opportunities lost all over the industry. But the possibility of ITV Creates making another full year, even at a monthly rate, was basically gone. Repeats from previous years started to enter the rotation. But they did have a couple of new ones ready to go. One that debuted in May came from Susan Harris, no relation, and her Blackpool Community Outreach Programme, Left Coast Makers. They wrote their positive thoughts on some paint balloons and then hurled them at a wall. The resulting Jackson Pollock was then windowed behind the logo. The final effect was pretty cool. By now, of course, ITV had to reassure viewers that this was made before the play, but it was still safe to be in a crowd. They did the same for June's new one, filmed right at the last minute before lockdown. The art charity Same Sky hired the kids from Regent High School in Camden to make a bunch of paper lanterns and hold them up appropriately to make the logo. The young carers did something similar, also filmed in the last days before the apocalypse, and theirs was ultimately used during August. And the items then whirled on rotation for a while until October. 
October is Black History Month. And again, ITV had planned something for it. Going back temporarily to the weekly format, four black artists took turns to provide the items. How far in advance of the plague, if at all, these were filmed, I don't know. There is only one person in each. Afro-surrealist Hamid May was the first up with a haunting portrait on cloth of blackness, ancient and modern, in which the ITV logo was draped. Next came Alfie Kungu, who decided to concentrate more on the bright, warm carnival aspect of black community, which is fine, but at the height of the plague, it probably felt a bit like taking the piss. Not his fault. Third to bat was King Owusu, who wanted to explore the extent to which cultural differences are purely perceptual. His piece, in his words, expresses the duality of who I am being defined by what I look like, rather than who I am based on my experiences. Finally, Nikwe Dreft Jani created a bespoke piece of urban ground. In the studio for all disguised as a roadside, he erected a huge brick edifice, every brick hand painted, and on it painted a portrait of his father. As the camera pulls away, the edifice is revealed to no great surprise to be the ITV logo. And that was it for the year. The ITV Creates archives went into rotation, with Christmas handled by the same four idents as 2019. They managed to continue the campaign in 2021, again going monthly, this time themed vaguely around artists collaborating with people from other fields. We opened in January with this lovely collaboration between artist Sharon Walters and landscape gardener Mark Lane. A nice outdoorsy motif, just to remind us of what outdoors look like. Our artist for February was Melanie King, a compulsive innovator in the field of photography. And Professor Lucy Green, a solar physicist, again, just to remind us all of what the sun was. They used appropriately solar ultraviolet to make a cyanotype print of the IDB logo as a tribute to the European Space Agency's Solar Orbiter, the little robot that's got closer to the bastard thing than anything else that didn't immediately get vaporised and is still up there now taking pictures of how it works. March was given over to the kids again and then April was given to Jason Wilshire Mills who makes brilliant and terrifying 3D printed outdoor sculptures. His collaborator was puppet maker Judith Hope and as you can see it was a match made in heaven. It's an even better touch, the moving hands are saying things like I love you, and friends, and Makaton. May included Mental Health Awareness Week, and so that was the theme for the item. Prominent neuroscientist Tara Swat collaborated with June Minyama Smithson, better known as Mummy Moon. They've taken a big reflective ITV logo and surrounded it with motion graphics. The reflection of the graphics on the logo mirrors the way the mind processes external influences, and the images themselves are intended to fire up your synapses in a positive way somehow. We're obviously not to an off-com bottling level. June is of course Pride Month. This saw a two-artist team up from Tom Wolski and Rebecca Smith, combining the former specialty of intricately, minutely detailed fine art line work with the latter's projection of the inevitable rainbow colours. In July, we finally got some honest-to-god performance art in these things, with Justin Hibbs and Rosalind Davies making a fractured, reflective environment in which Jamal Sterrett Phoenix busts and broke up moves in slow motion. In August, we went back to the science, with installation artists Walter and Zoniel, and a science teacher called Genevieve Bent. They essentially staged one of those fun destructive chemistry experiments where you put two things in the same beaker and oops they hate each other and everything explodes. Add a little food colouring and film the whole mess with a high speed camera and that's art. In September video artist Megan Broadmeadow teamed up with drone specialists Ben Shepard and Mike Bishop to attack the Kremlin. I mean she made a metal sculpture of the logo and designed the set as a futuristic loading bay for the drone boys to fly it into. Apparently this ident is set in the year 3500, and mankind still exists, you're right. October was Black History Month again. Just the one ident for it in 2021 though, made by illustrator Kingsley Nabechi and civil engineer Mimi Nwosu. They put together a concrete sculpture decorated with traditional Nigerian patterns sitting slightly incongruously on a building site, ethereally backlit. 
November went into the world of electronics, as Taylor and artist Kasif Nadim Chowdhury worked with robotics engineers Chung and Wood. The result was a brilliantly colourful rendering of the logo that really was hand-built by robots. And then Christmas was upon us again. At first, ITV just brought the 2019 set back into the rotation, but after a week, they revealed that they did in fact have some new ones. Mario Osborne built a white neon side of the ITV logo and glued hundreds of strands of tinsel to the inside. Fire up a wind machine and you got a great Christmas item. The other one came from Luke, Betty and Chris, professional swing out sister cosplayers and also an art collective called Designs in Air, who as the name suggests, specialise in inflatable sculptures like this. See how the T almost doesn't behave? That's the joy of in-camera effects. CGI can't be spontaneous. I mean, you could do that in CGI, but I mean, you'd have to do it deliberately, and it wouldn't be the same. And those were the last new ITB Creates items. For most of 2022, the entire archive was placed on rotation, with the drones particularly popular. Except, of course, for the fortnight around the Queen's death when everything went black by official fears. Finally, in November, the relaunch they'd been working on for so long was finally completed. ITV regained the one and also the bland slice of life aesthetic that ITV creates and spent three years showing up as boring and passe. We were back to square one. If nothing else, ITV creates was responsible for some of the best Christmas items in years, but it was ultimately much more than that, one of the great successes in the field of television items. Proof that linear TV was still a ways from becoming obsolete, and that there was life in the form yet. And life in the seemingly basic premise of actually having and showing a symbol as the main part of an ident, instead of just obliquely referencing your channel symbolically. See also Channel 4's recent re-embrace of its 40-year-old new moon. If I had to pick a favourite, I wouldn't. There's too many of them. I could prefer one island on any given day and another five minutes later. Frankly, there wasn't a bad one in the lot. Nothing else, it was just good to see art being promoted again, even just in the field of television branding. Some of the artist's statements were even coherent. It's a shame, in the end, that ITV went back to bland, but truth be told, these ideas were too good for them. Shots of things happening with a logo stuck on top is much closer to the tone of their programme. A product like ITB Creates is really more like something the BBC should have done. But they've been too busy the past 10 years undermining themselves to give Boris Johnson and Nadine Dorries an excuse to abolish them, to really worry about their on-screen image. Hence, oneness. And more pertinently, the fact that the perfect station for a project like this one, BBC4, which is meant to be the angular chin-stroking BBC2 of the late 80s, given context and space by television's digital expansion, is instead relegated to archive repeats that get cancelled to make way for the snooker. All of it broadcast under constant existential threat from above the next time cuts need to be made. At least they're not being shown up by ITV anymore. That can't have been a good for you. Now let's all agree to never be creative again. Mm -hmm.